There he is. He got it. You guys see that? Welcome back to another episode of Bass with Captain Lou Bank Fishing Edition. Guys, today I'm covering the most versatile soft plastic bait that every angler should have down here when fishing in South Florida. Again, I must emphasize, must have. Stick around. And the bait that I'm gonna be talking to you guys about today is no other than the fluke. I know there's tons of videos out there about the fluke, but none of them talk about how to fish the fluke in South Florida. This bait right here alone is responsible for so many nice fish catches and so many quality and quantity amounts of fish down here in South Florida and it's like a sleeper bait that people don't talk about. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, peel back the curtain a little bit and show you guys how versatile this bait is down here in our waters. So in this particular outing, I'm gonna cover a few things. I'm gonna cover the type of outfits you should be considering, the type of lines, plural, that you should think about, hook sizes, as well as rigging methods. I'm gonna cover all these things right now. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and cover the gear and get this out of the way. This fluke, or the weight of this soft plastic allows anglers, if you're proficient enough, you could throw these easily on bait casters and you could throw them really easy on spinning outfits. Uh, this particular outfit that I'll be talking to you guys about is the Sierra, uh, Dobbin Sierra series, the 734. That means it's a seven foot three, it's a seven foot three inch rod and it's a four power. So it's more on like than the medium, medium heavy type of, uh, of side. And the reason why I like this type of rod for this particular bait is because of the soft, the softer tip that this comes to fishing this particular bait. Now moving into the type of lines. This particular bait can be thrown on any type of line, really. I like doing a combination of lines, and let me explain. I like throwing this particular bait on braid. In this case, because of this outfit that I grabbed, it's 40 pound braid, but I'm fishing it on a 12 pound co-poly type of uh, monofilament. And the reason why I do this is because I like the way that the bait moves freely when using a monofilament type of line versus braid. So we're talking about hooks in this particular bait, pay very close attention. Because what I like using, I like using a 4 odd extra wide gap hook. So if you like fishing this bait with monofilament or fluorocarbon, I highly recommend that you use this bait using a thin wire 4 odd hook. And the reason for it is because it's, they're like hypodermic needles and they're thin and they'll penetrate through the soft plastic through this thick soft plastic pretty quickly and help with the hook penetrate. Versus if you fish it with a thick gauge, it's gonna take a lot of effort to be able to penetrate that, that, um, that soft plastic. So I know that was a mouthful and you really had to think that over or rewind a few times. Let me make it simpler for you. Monofilament, fluorocarbon, light wire hook. Braid, deep cover, thick wire hook. Maybe that helped you guys out a little bit. So the type of places that the fluke will shine here in South Florida. This little playground of mine, it's, a, it's literally a park, but I call this my fishing playground because it encapsulates the type of cover we have down here in South Florida in the Everglades, if you bank fish in the Everglades, and a lot of our community type of areas have this type of cover. So what you're gonna see over the background is if you have areas that have a bunch of trees and they're old trees, you're gonna find that tree branches, big branches, especially after storms, will fall into the water. So sometimes they don't even clean that up, which makes for excellent, excellent natural cover. The other thing you're gonna find is lily pads, spatter dock. There's a bunch of spatter dock, spatter dock areas that we have down here. And these areas are fish magnets, especially if it's an isolated type of clump. Another type of cover that we, that we have a lot of down here is hydrilla. And be, with hydrilla comes hydrilla clumps and hydrilla pockets and stuff like that. And that's where the, the fluke will shine. Because what happens is you can fish that, you can fish this bait over those pockets and then let it slowly drift down in its natural state. And you're gonna find some hellacious, hellacious blow ups or, or a lot of fish action just by fishing it that way. So before I go, I dive further into the type of places you should be throwing the fluke, I gotta go ahead and show you guys the different rigging methods. I know I talked about that I rig it in three separate ways. The fluke can be rigged in many, many ways. A lot of people like to put a weight on the nose of their fluke in order to, fishing it, to fish it down below on the bottom. I know a personal friend of mine that he does that and he's very, very good at that technique. Other people like to expose the hook on the back of the hook 
meaning you'll have a, just a, a hook coming out the back of the fluke. And that, and that serves well in a lot of open water uh, applications, especially when there's a schooling type of situation. A fluke is unbelievable when it comes to that and you get a very fast hookup with that hook point exposed. The type, of, the type of rigging that I'm gonna be talking about are three of them that are very well used in this type of application when you have moderate to thick type of vegetation. And I'm gonna cover these points now. So what I'm gonna cover with you guys, I'm gonna cover the three ways I rig the fluke. The first one is what I call the traditional method. And what do I mean by that? That's simply when you take the hook point, you go down the middle of the nose of the hook, come out on the upper ribs, okay? You rotate it around, you go through the back of the fluke in a straight line, okay? And that's the traditional method. You got the hook point exposed. As soon as the fish bites down, the hook pops out and you go ahead and, and, and you can go ahead and set the hook that way. What I find what happens is when you have this type of uh, denser type of cover or medium type of cover, this little exposed hook point will catch on to the, to the, to the lily pads. Okay, so my version is a little bit different. It's similar to that of the traditional, but instead of the hook coming out the back of the fluke, mine is just gonna go inside those ribs, inside the ribs so that the hook point is not even shown. It's basically inside, inside the fluke like so. The only difference that I do, however, is that I do a little bit of a, of a push with my finger to expose the hook to give it a channel and then after that I hide the hook once again. By doing this type of method you're going to find that there is zero hook exposed on that bait and what's going to happen is when you throw it inside this type of cover it's going to be able to move freer inside that cover versus having an exposed hook. So the third way that I do it is called the non-traditional method and what I mean by that is I just turn the, I turn the fluke around the opposite way and I go ahead and put the hook point the same way, okay? And I just pop it out through its front or through its back, rather. And then what happens is I put the eye of the, I put my hook point right in between those ribs, okay? And by doing that, what I've done is that I've set it up so I protect my hook at all times. The hook is protected at all times. However, when rigging this way, the fluke swims a lot differently. Okay, so you may want to experiment with what type of rigging works best for you. So why use a leader when fishing the fluke versus one type of line over another? The reason why I like using a braid to leader combination when it comes to fluke fishing is because of the type of cover that I'm fishing first and foremost. The second most important point is because of the weight of this lure. This lure is, has such nice weight to it that if, you, if you're proficient in casting, you can cast this bait a very long distance. So the reason why I enjoy the leader is because I could fish thicker cover, okay? Having the monofilament leader allows the, the bait to move a little bit more freer. I find that when you're fishing braid, the fluke just doesn't swim loose enough for my liking. That's my opinion, of course but with a monofilament, it allows it to, to swim freer. So if I were to catch a fish right now or a fish would strike inside this cover, because braid offers that zero shock absorption, I'm able to lay into that fish better and allow the outfit, meaning this medium to medium heavy outfit, to be able to work in my favor based on the distance and the thickness of the hook. There he is, he got it. You guys see that? He almost yanked it out of my hands. <laughs> what better way to showcase the bait than with that? Look, look at the penetration. Look at the hook penetration at that distance. You see that? The hook went right through. And look how deep he took that bait. Look at that. Granted, it's not a big bass. But did you see how that bass hit it from that distance? So does the fluke have to be fished slowly? Not necessarily. The lure could be fished or this bait could be fished very quickly and efficiently, but you gotta give it a little bit of slack with a little bit of rod tip movement. Like so. And then by doing it like this, it is quickly tracking slowly in the water 
in a walk to dog type of fashion. And then every time I pause, depending on the direction it finished that, it'll then sink that direction. Little guy, right outside the mouth. But I wanna show you guys, see how the hook point, the hook went right through. That's, that, that's, the, cape, that's the thin gauge for you. Oh, I lost that one. And I got, <laughs> and it went up into the tree. <laughs> I honestly think it's the same bass. Look, look how the hook point, and look where the fluke went. It went up the line, it didn't get bundled up like everybody says it does, see that? I mean, yes, they're little bass, but if you guys have noticed, there's a pattern, they're striking right at the bank. This, this bait impersonates bait fish so well, and it's such a good little, like a good, not a morsel, but it's a good, a good feeding size that even little bass are hitting it. And the cool part about this experience and being able to show you guys and teach you guys this bait, this is a high pressured area. This is a small area in a very well-known urban park and it gets pounded every weekend by people. And yet I know they're small, but hey, I'm catching bass. So why is the fluke so versatile? Reason for it is because it can be fished right below the water surface. It can be fished in the middle of the water column and it can, fish, and it can be fished below the water column. Very, very effective bait once you get to understand it. It comes in an assortment of colors. It can mimic any of our bait fish down here in South Florida. So with all those attributes, why aren't you throwing it more? I strongly urge you and challenge you, especially as these spring months are approaching, add the fluke to your arsenal and you're gonna be catching some serious bass. All right, hopefully you guys found this video helpful. I'm curious to hear about how your guys' bank fishing adventures went after you guys tried fishing the fluke with the suggestions that I offered. I appreciate you guys for watching. We went over 400 subscribers this past weekend. Thank you guys so much. That wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you guys liking and subscribing to this channel. Really, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. If you happen to be new to this channel and watching this for the very first time and you enjoyed the content, please, please, please subscribe and join our community. It is growing. These two videos right here that I'm about to show you guys, if you wanna know about bank fishing, as far as our Miami parks are concerned, check out this video right here. As far as fishing after a cold front, bank fishing down here in South Florida, especially our canal systems, check out that video right here. I think you guys might find that helpful. Again, guys, I appreciate you guys for watching and I'll see you guys again soon.